Hello and welcome back to another bloody good waffle. Yes, it's that time again, that time where I get to waffle any old bollocks into the camera for your viewing pleasure. Now, it's been a very long time since I did waffle any old bollocks into the camera for your viewing pleasure, um, unless you'll count in my reviews. So, you know, I thought about time I did one. You know, a lot's gone on this month as well for me. You know, we had Vape Jam at the beginning of the month and I haven't really spoken about my experiences there yet. Um, I was a special guest um, presenter of the Ideal Ohm Show last night. You know, the plumes clunk. <coughs> only joking um so that was really cool as well and um i've got quite a lot coming up for review as well so i thought you know i could do a couple of intros of what i've got coming up on this waffle today and of course we've also got the best of the worst as well um i did actually put a post up in my facebook group a couple of days ago just saying oh, has anybody got any really crappy juice or any juice that tastes foul and um jason from vir juice he did um actually knock me up some uh, rather uh, nasty sounding juice. So looking forward to giving that a bit of a whirl later on. Now what have I got coming up for review in the next coming weeks? Um, well, I've got this here. I've got the Wapari Wide. Yes, the godfather of C-frames. I actually met Teppo at Vape Jam, which was really cool. You know, I was a bit you know awestruck. Like I said, he is the godfather of C-frames. I have reviewed his 18650s in the past, the DNA and the SX, and um, I managed to get a wide off of him, which was really cool. Um, really nice, 26650 SXJ V2 V2 board. You know, he's clear coat in the wood, which is uh, really, really well done. I've um, got a little inlay with Wapari and the little wolf sort of logo that he uses. Really nice battery cap now, compared to the old push one that we had that was always a bit problematic for me. And yeah, it's just a really nice mod. To, to be honest, you know, um, even got like a nice rounded MyTech on it, which uh, makes it a little bit different. On top, got the old Plasma Air or the Plasm Air. I'm going to have to learn to get that right, which I reviewed yesterday. Yum, yum. Um, what else have I got? Oh, yes, I've got these two here. Also at Vajam, um, I was given sort of like a prototype version of this fluid 18650 DNA 40 with a big screen. And it's really cool. Look at the size of that. That's, that's an 18650. You know, it's it, it's about the same size as the atomizer that I've got on it. You know, it's a tiny, lovely stab wood burl here, uh, natural color. Um, like I said, DNA 40, big screen, and just a really nice little pocket mod. Look, kind of looks like a little drinking flask, you know. Um, so for the alcoholics out there, this is definitely the mod for you, but just don't get it confused with your whiskey. Um, really cool. And on top, I've got the Cloud One V1.1, maybe. It's uh, it's kind of like I had a few improvements from the original Cloud One. It's not a v V2, but it's, it's just a couple of upgrades. It's got now a stopper on the airflow control, which also um, acts so that you can take the uh, deck off without using at all, which, you know, is really handy and was one of the downers of the uh, Cloud uh, Cloud One. And we've also now got some sort of uh, juice wells or some indent wells on the deck for your cotton to sit in, um, which just makes it a bit more neater and tidier and easier to get that juice control chamber over the top of it. So, you know, it's not a V2, so to speak. It's just some modifications done for their second batch. I will do a little video on it, maybe like an update video, but it doesn't warrant uh, its own review. It, there's no change in the way it vapes. There's no change in the airflow. Um, there's no change on the channels as well. So we've still got those rather sort of slim channels. Some people have complained about high VG, uh, high VG juices in them. Some have said they work fine. So it's just a matter of personal taste, really, I suppose, and uh, how you're wicking it. But yeah, I'll do a little um, update video on it and just uh, show you those couple of little extra modifications but I still really like the cloud one I think it gives it a great flavor and also what we got are oh, this this now this is really interesting and it's been a long time coming this is the port by Pegatech 
Um, Peter Gatt has uh, designed and manufactured this, and I think it's been sort of in design before it came out for nearly about 18 months. It's been a long time coming. Now it's like it's an all-in-one system. You know, um, you've got your mod and an atomizer built in. Um, mainly designed for Genesis-style builds uh, because that's I think that's what Peter prefers to vape. But you can actually put cotton um, builds in this. I've seen it done. Um, there's a few out in the wild now, um, and also the board. He's kind of built from the ground up. It's his own board, it's his own design, it's his own workings. No wires in this, just connectors. Um, and it takes two 18350s as well at 800 ma, uh, which is quite interesting, you know. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's definitely a cool piece, you know, um, and I'm still working with it because it's got a, a sort of like a, its own board and that. I'm still sort of getting to grips with what everything does. Um, but yeah, it's and it's got a like a contactless switch as well. The switch is really, really nice on this and uh, it is quite interesting. So I am looking forward to reviewing this. I'm just uh, going to take my time with it a little bit before I sort of jump in. Got a mesh build in here at the moment. I haven't tried it with cotton yet. I will give that a burn over the weekend. And what else? Ah, yes, these two here. Um, now, first of all, my Nada. Nada? Did I say that right? I said like uh, John John Martin there. Nada. Uh, my Nada turned up today, um, which was really cool. Um, the, the great guys over at the Plumes of Hazard had um, a list. They had uh, sort of 10 of these, and they were kind enough to uh, put me down on uh, one of their picks. So I got my Nada sent today. Also got a BF pin with it. And they sent me one of them all 10 uh, top caps as well. So really nice of them. Thank you very much, guys. Um, you know, a lot of people have been raving about this. I know Todd really, really likes his Nada. Um, so I thought, you know, I've got to try and check one of these out and give it a review, you know. So uh, I haven't even built it yet. It literally turned up about... 10 minutes ago um and which was quite cool because it's, it's, it's come via usps and it took about four days i think i paid for this on monday you know so that was quite you know i've been asking people because i'm going away on the weekend so i've been kind of like pestering people when do they turn up you know how long do they usually take and as soon as you mention usps people go don't even bother waiting for it damien just forget about it and it will turn up and you know you'll be like oh surprise um but yeah it, it only took them uh, three days in all so um pretty impressed about that and at the moment, I've got it sitting on top of the Lithos. Lithos, yes, um, by Unicorn Mod. Now, um, I've reviewed some of uh, Dom's um, stuff in the past. He brought out the Pegasus 22 Genesis style atomizer. Um, he brought out uh, a mech mod, which didn't really take off the mod. Um, he also brought out a 26650 uh, C frame. And now he's brought out his sort of like O frame um, version here. And you know what? It's. Now, these panels are actual marble, you know, proper marble, and um, it's got a solid frame as well, so it's a heavy, heavy beast. It's got the SXJV2 in it. It takes an 18650, unfortunately. For the size of it, I'd, I'd kind of uh, preferred him to sort of make some uh, adjustments and put in a 26, but it takes an 18650, and it's got the switch on the top, which is rather interesting. I'm still trying to get used to that. Um, you know, for some of you it might be fine, but we're used to having the switch sort of on the front of these style mods, like the limelight, like the square. Um, but this one's kind of on the top, and um, you know, it's you can actually, you know, vape it sort of like it, it, it's it, it's weird. You know, I'm getting used to it. You know, I think I think personally, some of you are going to love it, and some of you are going to hate it. Uh, and then it is a heavy boy as well because of the marble, and they're they're not user interchangeable either. They're not user really replaceable. So um, you know whatever you get, kind of like a stab wood mod is is what you get to keep. You know, I'm not sure whether he's going to be doing sort of other panels that you can send it in and he can change your panels. More than likely, if he has a, ever has to deal with damage, unfortunately, he'll be able to sort some of them out. But yeah, you can't change them yourselves. You can't buy extra marble panels and uh, and put them in this. But they've got a wonderful feel to them, these panels. They are very, very smooth. They feel great, you know. Um, this one here has got a, a shined, a sort of a mirror polished frame. I do know he's doing brushed as well. Um, so, you know, I'll, uh, I'm will i going to try and get a review out for this next. Um, I, I know he wanted a review today, but I just, I'm not going to be able to fit it in, I don't think. So I will try and get it done um, as quick as I can. But just to show you it off, you know, um, just to let you know now, it's very solidly built. Um, the marble feels wonderful. It is 
heavy. You know, this was never going to feel like a vape droid. It's a solid steel frame with marble doors on it. So, you know, a bit of luxury, a bit of la -de da with the old marble. I don't think anything else has, has dealt with marble before. So, um, you know, we'll wait and see. But yeah, I know there's a list going up on his group tonight. I think at 10 p.m. Um, so, you know, if you're a member of the Unicorn Mod Group and you fancy one of these, list is going up tonight. Um, what else have I got? I've got a couple of RDAs and um, you know, I've got loads of bits. You know, I'd be here all day if I was going on about that. So uh, let's move on to Vape Jam, shall we? Wow. I really bloody enjoyed myself at Vape Jam. Got to meet loads of people who I've only ever spoken to online. You know, I got to meet you know, Mark Todd. I got to meet uh, Phil Basado, Dimitri. He's a lovely guy. Um, I got to meet lots of modders as well. I was like a kid in a candy shop um, in that modders gallery. You know, it was just... That's basically where I hung out, of course. I was in the modders gallery. I, I had a few walks around and a few, you know, and a few beers and stuff like that. But I was mainly in the modders gallery. We had like Loch Ness there. We had Steve Dockery from Top Hat. I got to hang with him. He even let me look after his stall for a little bit. And it was like, it was, it was brilliant. Um, who else? We saw there, there was Caravella there. There was uh, Sunbox. You know, there was uh, Wapari as well. There was Eamon from Vape Droid showing off his sort of like prototype new Vape Droid, which was really cool. Um, there was Preston um, from uh, Vapor Flask who was there, also helping out with Loch Ness. You know, uh, Mod Dog was there. Um, Tomaz from Melody, who's a really, really <laughs> extroverted guy. What a weird guy. Lovely, funny as hell, but my God, the geezer's off his fucking tree. Uh, but yeah, I got to hang out with all those guys. It was it was really good fun as well. You know, dudes from the Ideal Home Show was there. Um, you know, it was just it was just full of people, which was great. You know, um, Igor, who obviously who, who ran it, and uh, Amir driving around on his little sort of uh, handicapped car thing <laughs> it's just surreal uh, and of course they had the girls cladly dressed and scantily dressed and all that and all the cloud blowing and things like that and more juice than you could possibly fill the atlantic with it was just absolutely chock-a-block and you know everyone i've spoken to had a great time you know it was really quite impressive what those three guys put on you know you've got maria amir and igor they're three young dudes who managed to put on a huge event in London, you know, um, and it must have been a load of stress for them. So I applaud them for that. I had a thoroughly good time. They'd got modders from around the world there, um, all sorts of people. Um, yes, I know there were some problems with um, Phil and Nick and um, Dimitri not being able to speak and that and, and all that. And that was a shame. Um, but, you know, for the rest of it, I thought they did fantastically well. Um, and, you know, I'm looking forward to what they, they do next year. And uh, it can only get bigger and better. We all have a few teething problems. Problems, but from my experience there it was fantastic I did take a, a couple of videos I was meant to do more right I was meant to do like more kind of more of a vlog thing but when you're there amongst everybody you're sort of the last thing you want to be doing well for me anyway was uh, walking around just filming everything so I, I took a couple of videos which I'll, I'll play for you right now but the rest of it I was just socializing I was just vaping and getting exceedingly exceedingly drunk there was a pub uh, near there uh, called the fox i believe we was all hanging out with um, wish you could vape in which was great you know the sambucas was flying you know <laughs> some stage people were flying it was just a, a really good experience and uh, had a great time but yeah i'll show you a, a couple of the videos that i took um, and the majority of the videos that i took i'm pretty much sober in them so you know they were quite early on in the day so already on our way down to uh, London to the XL to Vape Jam 2016. Uh, really looking forward to it. I think we've done about 100 miles already. Only got about 60 something to go now. Gonna go straight to the hotel, clean up, and then uh, mosey on down there. Uh, really looking forward to it today. It's um, I think it's just business to business today, so it's not open to sort of like the general public. Um, but I'm going to be heading straight to the Modders Gallery. Um, looking forward to seeing people like Steve Dockery from Top Hat, Teppo from Wapari. I've actually got my uh, my eye on uh, Wapari. Who's that guy? You're on video, son. Stay, uh, stay safe. Um, yeah, um, I think uh, Vape Droid are going to be there. Loch Ness. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be cool. Um, I even believe uh, Todd's going to be there today, so uh, I'm going to try and avoid him like the plague. Do you know what I mean? He's a bit of a fanboy, so I, I don't want him like getting all gooey-eyed when he sees me. You know, it'd be really embarrassing for me and for him. Um, so you know, uh, and then 
yeah, uh, just gonna have a little look around. And then obviously tomorrow, all you guys who are going, um, we get to hang around with you and uh, you know, blow some clouds, bro. Blow some clouds, in it, you know what I mean? In London town. Um, yeah, staying at the uh, Prince Regent, um, but this will be going out afterwards, so uh, you can't fuck with me. Um, yeah, uh, really looking forward to it now, and um, hopefully be there in, in about an hour. So uh, yeah, I'll report to you soon. <laughs> So uh, just got to my hotel and it's it's literally the pokiest hotel you've ever seen. I mean, that's it, I can't even show you anymore. There's there's nothing to it. The reception is right behind my wall. So, uh, you know, a bit later on, you're gonna wear some stuff. And I got, uh, I'm on the ground floor and basically it's, it's just like the high street outside my window. Mate, talk about, I was in hysterics. It's, it's tiny. Absolutely tiny, but you know, hey ho, at least I got a bit for the night. My number one fan, Mark Todd. I love you. So, um, what, what was it about me that made you get into reviewing? I just, um, I, I can't do this. <laughs> no. Anyway, look, Mark Todd. Mark Todd, everybody, right? At Vape Jam, in the modest gallery, with all the really expensive shit. I knew it would happen, it's like a disease, you know? Yes, yes. He's already bought three Bavaris. Two top hats and a Geppetto, even though Geppetto's not even here. That's the power of Martin. So yeah, um, in the Modern's Gallery at the moment, it's busy as fuck. As I just heard uh, Mr. Grove say, Mr. Rick Grove from Ideal Home Show, he just said it was all vapor sharks last year. Now there's all the Paris and Loch Ness and uh, top hats. So you know, looks like a uh, high-end scene is now starting to take over. See, I fucking knew it would. Didn't listen to me, did ya? Eh? After your money, but yeah, look, very busy. Look at that, look. This is where I'll be hanging out most of the day because the beer is fucking too expensive. So yeah, I'll check in with you soon. See? So back in the Modest Gallery for day two, I'm here with um, Rick Grove from an ideal home show. They also call him, you know, he's also the manager of uh, Big J. No, this is John. Say hi, John. Hello, John. So, you know, you might have recognised him from uh, the Ideal Home Show, which is kind of like the clone of Plumes of Hazard. Uh, well, I'm admin on your page. <laughs> and he's also an admin on SV. Um, so, yeah, how are you enjoying it so far, John? I'm enjoying it a lot. He's enjoying it a lot. So, where's Big J today? He's working at McDonald's. He's working at McDonald's. You see, he passed up the opportunity to be here today to work at fucking McDonald's. You don't pay him enough. So, there you go, yeah. Really good time, you know. Shame about my hotel room. My hotel room was so fucking pokey. I mean, I was meant to stay at the Ibis, right? I'd already booked, I'd booked it ages ago, the Ibis, and uh, that was where the majority of people were staying as well. And uh, what happened was, is my card was up for renewal. My uh, my debit card, you know, it was like, you know, when it runs out, the expiry date and all that bollocks. So that had actually run out, <coughs> and I'd forgot to update it on their site. And without even contacting me, the bastards, they just gave my room away to somebody. And as always, before I travel anywhere, I always phone up the hotel just in case, you know, make sure everything's like nice and dandy. And they went, no, no, we've, uh, your card was declined. <laughs> la di da spent too much on mods. Uh, your card was declined, so we gave your room to somebody else. So the very last minute, I rushed on the line. I thought, Jesus, because I'd arranged all my childcare, well, my wife did, I'm not taking the credit. Uh, we'd arranged all the uh, childcare and that and scattered our children around the four winds of South Yorkshire, um, you know, which cost me a pretty, cost me nearly about like, four or five hundred quid before we even left the house, you know, and um, I didn't have a hotel room, so I've come up running upstairs on my neck, you know, oh shit, oh shit, and I found this place called, um, should I say it, yeah, fuck them, I found this place called the Prince Regent, I thought, ah, oh, sounds a bit of a, eh? uh, Prince Regent, fucking la da king for a day, and um, we booked it, and I thought, lovely, and it was the same price, so I thought, yeah, that's a bit of a bonus, look at me, lucky dame, 
Drove down there and we ended up sort of like down some really fucking fucked up road, you know, typical fucking London road, no offence. And um, and then parked in this place and outside it was like had one of them big hotel signs, looked like Bates Motel, do you know what I mean? I was waiting for Norman Bates to be in there, mother. Um, we've gone in and um, he's like, I can see the cleaning lady, clean, there's the reception, right, right next to me here, right, there's a reception. And I can see right here, there's a door open with this like tiny little fucking bed in it. And the cleaning lady in there. And he went, well, you must wait 10 minutes for your room. And I looked and I thought, oh, that's, that's going to be my room, isn't it? That pokey little thing there, right next to the reception. And God willing, it fucking well was. And uh, after about five minutes of a uh, overing, he's brought us into this room. And I must have been no less, no more than 10, 11 feet from the reception desk on the ground floor, you know. So there was no ranky banky that could have gone on in that hotel room because he'd been, you know, oh, we're here 24 hours, he told me. So he's at that desk 24 hours or somebody is. So, you know, we couldn't get up to much in our hotel room, couldn't have no people back, having a drink and a piss up, bit of twister, you know. No, all off the cards, mate. I was right. And, and it was about as big as a fucking postage stamp as well. Like me and Nicky like that in there. All right, it's nice, this, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it was absolutely ridiculous. You know, the showers, like right next to the bed. And we're on the ground floor and my window is right next to the street. So you just got people walking past this. You know, you get them people when you walk past your houses and you can't help but look into their houses. I, I still do it. I, I know I'm doing it and I should stop. And it was kind of like that. So we had to have the curtains drawn all the time and it was red hot in there. I mean, there was no... Fun. If there was air conditioning, there was probably a rat stuck in it or something. I don't know. So, you know, that was like, that was quite, that was actually quite funny. You know, I should have been mad about it, but it was like, it was so typical. It was me. You know what I mean? If anyone's going to book a shithole, I am. Um, but that was cool. And, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the whole experience I, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed hanging with everybody and stuff like that. The beer was expensive, right? Bottle of Peroni was a bluey. Yeah, five pounds, right? Um, that was that was quite expensive. So, you know, I'm smuggling in Fosters in my knapsack and things like that, cheap bastard. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, apart from that, it was a, a really, really good time. Really good time. So I was on the uh, Ideal Home Show last night. John, like I said, has gone away. John's gone away on holiday. Mr. I'm on holiday 27 times a year. I don't, what else does he do? You know what I mean? The admin's safe of vapours. He's um, he's on the I presents the Ideal Home Show and he goes on holiday. That's I wish I had his life. It's just and, and he manages Big J. You know, I'm oh, back in the kitchen. That guy. Um, but yeah, he was on holiday and uh, I think Mark Todd was busy and Scott just didn't want to. So, you know, I'm next on the list to go on and uh, help present it. But yeah, thoroughly good time. Um, that guy, uh, they had Mooch on there who was discussing about lipos and comparing them to 18650s and safety and, and stuff like that. And that was really interesting. Um, and yeah, and it's just a good giggle. So I want to thank them guys for letting me go on there. If you haven't watched the Ideal Home Show, I'll put the link in the description. Um, it's kind of like uh, the British Plumes. I won't say clone. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the British Plumes of Hazard. So uh, you should go, great information on there. And the guys are cool and they have a good giggle as well. So, uh, you know, Todd's presented it and Scott's, Scott Bonner's been on and loads of people go on there. And it's a relatively new channel as well. So go and uh, give them a sub and that and give them your support. You know, we need more stuff like that rather than just single guys like me waffling old bollocks who you know don't really know their ass from their elbow uh, these guys actually know what they're talking about you've got a variety of opinions and discussions that go on so it's really cool you know and it's just a great alternative if you want to watch <laughs> plumes of hazard but with english accents then go check out the ideal home show take a quick blast Really loving this uh, plasm air. I really do dig this tank as well. I've, I've, I'm using this more than my Uber to lately. I just I love the look of it and love the flavour of it. Um, I reviewed it yesterday, so if you haven't seen that, go watch it. So what else has happened to me? I've got something. It's not vape related though. Do you mind? Probably not if you're watching this. You know. Um, it's quite a funny story, so I'll let you know. And it's also given me a theory about something um, that I haven't thought about much, but it made me think about something. Now, the other day, right, and it is quite funny. The other day, I, I, I popped out. I went to Vape GB. I've got um, a little vape shop in uh, in my town here, and I, I popped in there for about five minutes just to have a chat and, and see some people. And my wife had gone out. I think, I don't know if she's going to get her nails done or her hair done or something like that. And um, I've come home, and I've got a text off my wife, and... Um, She's got, well, I don't know, I could just show you the screenshot. 
I should just show you the screenshot, okay? So here's the screenshot. See that? Are you home? Yes, babe. Do you want out? Which is northern for anything. Um, a blowjob would be nice, you know, and of course it would have been, you know, what man doesn't enjoy a good blowjob. And it laughs out loud, laughs out loud, there you go. And then it was, I'll see what I can do, lovely, on a promise. And then as I thought about it, I thought I'd really like some Lucas Aid as well. You know, even if I enjoyed them both at the same time, that'd be great. Um, and then I put, I've got a chubby now, um, okay? And, you know, obviously, hard on, right? That's what I, I use for the word chubby. It's cute, it's kind of cute, you know what I mean? She laughs. Anyway, my wife, in her infinite wisdom, has taken a screenshot of that and she was going to send it to one of her mates, you know, because that's what they do, women. They send them to their friends, everything. There's, there's no secrets in your life if you're married now. It's shared between probably half a dozen other women. In There's half a dozen other women involved in your marriage, okay? Um, and she said that she's going to send it to her mate and she sent it to my mother-in-law, her mother instead. There you go. So her mother-in-law now thinks that I'm just one of them guys who just casually ask for a blowjob whenever I damn like it, and I call my dick, when it's hard, a uh, chubby. Brilliant. You know, look at that. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I thought it was, well, I felt a bit sick at first, um, realising I'm probably not going to be able to face my mother-in-law for a good few years now until hopefully, but she'll never forget. You never forget. People don't forget. People don't forget. But... I wanted to share this because I thought it was so funny, so I shared it on uh, my group, Safer Vapors, yes, and it got a laugh and some discussions about it, and obviously, and there was a few people as well who were sort of like, well, why was it even screenshotted, you know, and obviously, if you don't know why that was screenshotted and sent, then uh, you're not married. Uh, like I said, women share everything with each other, you know, um, and there's a reason that happens, and there's a reason why men don't share everything together. Now, I'm going to put you in a little scenario here, a little little hypothetical scenario that I came up with, right? And uh, we're going to introduce characters and uh, scenes and uh, locations and everything, okay? Now, uh, imagine there's this woman. Um, let's, call her, let's call her Belinda, right? Let's call this woman Belinda. And uh, Belinda's going out with a few mates this weekend. You know, she's going to go out nightclubs. So she's doled up. She's looking all nice. Bit of lippy, bit of gloss, you know, as you were. Uh, I, I, I skirt right up to its cheeks, yeah? And she's gone to a nightclub and she's out with the girls and she's having a little dance away, lovely jubbly, you know, doing the moves and all that, like flash dance on the dance floor. And all of a sudden she gets a dicky tummy, right? And Belinda, unfortunately, has an accident and craps herself, right? <laughs> I know, I'm just, this is just a hypothetical situation. Now, what does Belinda do? Well, straight away, she calls on the security of her friends, her trustworthy friends, her knights in shining armour. And she goes, yeah, Jackie, Jackie, come here. Jackie dances over. You alright, pay for some out. I've shit myself. Well, in military precision, Jackie, you know, wolf whistles her mate. You know, <laughs> I can't do it. But she wolf whistles the rest of the team. And they come over, yeah, like SWAT. All right? And with military precision, they extract Belinda from the centre of the dance floor into the toilet. With, with that sort of precision only can be compared to sort of like the US secret, the US special forces extracted Osma Bin Laden from that bunker, right? And she's in the toilet and she's being cleaned up before you could even blink. You even got one of Belinda's mates, let's call her Jackie, taking off her pants and going, here, yeah, darling, they're clean, they're for you, love you. Right? And within maybe a couple of minutes, Belinda's back on the dance floor, nobody's none the wiser, and nobody will ever know out of that circle of trust. You know, that code of silence is beautifully uh, demonstrated between these girls, right? Now you stick a man in that situation, okay? Let's stick a man in that situation. Let's call him Jim. Let's call Jim. Jim's in that situation. Jim's doled up, you know, looking like a uh, catalog, um, uh, cat catalog fucking model, you know, cockatoo haircut, you know, Ralph Lauren shirt on, you know, a bit metrosexual, as you were. And he's out now. He's out dancing in the nightclub, you know, all right, darling, Budweiser, it's cheap. Right, like, having a fucking bit of a giggle with the boys, yeah? They've been out for a curry before they've gone to the nightclub, bit of a stop off, yeah? And Jim gets a bit of a dicky tummy. And Jim shits himself on that dance floor. Now, when Jim's mate Terry comes over, who I say, yeah, yeah, he's a bit of skirt round here, and he tells Terry, what do you think's going to happen next? Yeah, do you think there's going to be that military precision extraction? Fuck no. Before fucking Jim's conscience jumps out of his body and goes, what are you doing? Don't tell him. Terry's already up on the DJ podium, yeah, with a microphone in one hand and his fucking Galaxy S4 in the other like this. Oi, everybody.
everybody, that guy's fucking shit himself. And before you know it, Jim's standing there with a spotlight on him. Everyone's backed off about six foot like he's like the lone opponent in a fight club scene, yeah? And people are all laughing and pointing. Now, Terry and Jim could have grown up together. They could have been fucking mum and dad's best friends with his mum and dad. They could have gone to college together, university together, shared the flat together. You know, maybe even sometimes when they were so poor, Jim's given Terry the last pound for a pot noodle, yeah? They're fucking the best man on each other's weddings. Their kids hang out together. But does Terry give a shit about that? Huh, he don't care, mate. And, and do you know what? He would crucify you at the drop of a hat because it's funny. And he's standing there taking pictures. Everybody's laughing at Jim now. And you think Terry's done with your shitty ass? He ain't even fucking finished, started yet, mate. I'm telling you, he's already sharing that on Facebook. He's already tweeting that to his 400 followers on Twitter who are being picked up by some guy who's got 50,000 and sharing it and sharing it. And before that night is through, you are no longer Jim. Jim is gone. You are now shitty pants, yeah? And, and I'll tell you what, that is why women are comfortable sharing everything with their mates and men just do not do it because we've all got a Terry. In our groups, in our cliques, there is definitely one Terry, okay? I know a Terry, all right? I'm not a Terry. I'm a Jim, yeah? But I know a few Terrys. Anyway, I just thought I'd uh, <laughs> go into one about that because it's been on my mind, you know, I've been thinking about it, you know, how come we don't get to share like women get to share? And, you know, and the reasons why I've kind of come accustomed to the fact that my life is an open book to probably about six or seven different women involved in my marriage. But yeah, rather funny and um, just some of the weird shit that I think sometimes. Maybe back to vaping now, should we? Yeah, possibly. Um, let's go for the best of the... Ah, no, I've got something else to show you. Yes, where is it? I did have them close to me, um, and I can't find them anymore. Where the bloody hell are they? Well, this is typical. Ah! These as well. These little pouches. Look. See that? You've got a little mod pouch here with a stormtrooper on it. You've got a little mod pouch here with like BB-8 on it. This is uh, Mrs. C's, a friend of mine, uh, Kevin, on uh, Safer Vapors. Um, his wife actually makes these. She also did those little mod maps as well. You know when I had that one mod map and the other one that had cunt on it? Yeah, that one. Um, she makes these for mods. Uh, really nice, look. Really great. You're going to fit all sorts in now. Keep them nice and safe when you're going out. Little, little thingy to hang them on. Look. I'll put the link in the description for these. Go and check them out. We've got a little Facebook page. She does some wonderful work. Look, you know, Star Wars on there. They put all sorts of different emblems on there. You could probably ask for what you wanted, give them a little PM and stuff. But yeah, really nice indeed. Look, like that. That's great. You know, and I've got one for the wife uh, for the old BB-8 because she likes BB-8. You know, quite cute. So yeah, there you go. Right. Let's move on to the best of the worst, shall we? And like I said... Um, Jason from v V I R, I think it is, I hope I got that right, I'll put a link in the description, there's going to be loads of links in this description, um, did knock me up some tikka masala, and I just did the story about Jim with a curry, that's great, um, tikka masala, from, yeah, okay, so let's try, to, I haven't even opened this yet, and I haven't even smelt it, oh my god, that's gross. Oh. Do you know what that smell? It does smell like tikka masala. It also smells like, you know, dry roasted peanuts, when you've had all the dry roasted peanuts and there's just that fucking, those bits left, you know, the dust. And they've been in the cupboard for months. That's what that smells like. Fuck me. Freshly built snapdragon here. I'm putting tikka masala in it. Sorry, lads. Let's do it. Oh. That smells gross. Now, Jason said he actually had to wear gloves when he was making this and he couldn't get the smell out for God knows how long. So, you know, maybe this is the day. All right, let's boost this up. Oh, it smells fucking foul. Let's try it. Tikka Masala, everybody. Oh, dear God. Oh, 
There's lemon in that. Oh, I fucking hate lemon. My mum used to drink nothing but lemon cordial. I grew up with, have a nice lemon. Fucking sick of lemon. There was definitely lemon in that. Is there lemon in masala? I don't know. You definitely get lemon with tikka, didn't you? Fucking hell, it's horrid. Blow some over to Nicky there. Can you smell that? You can't smell that? Want to have a try? No. <coughs> <coughs> oh, that's horrible. Jason, that's horrible. Mm. Oh, it's not. It's not washing up liquid lemon. Oh, Jif. He's also sent me some frazzles as well. I can only imagine that's bacon frazzles. So I'll try that next time. It's nasty. It's not the nastiest I've tried, but it's nasty. It's, it's like a lemon and shit. No puking, no. You can't get me. You can't fucking get me. Do you know, I've even vaped vomit juice and it still ain't made me vomit. The closest one I think was pizza once. You know, pizza, the crab was disgusting and it made me dribble. We've, I've dribbled a few times. I've coughed up a lung. But I, I think there was that one time with pizza where I think I even burped and nearly puked up at the same time. Like, bruh, nearly went. But now, not taking masala. It ain't fucking nice, though. It's the lemon aftertone that's, that's ruining it. Maybe if there was no lemon in there, just the shit, that'd be all right. So, yeah, that's about it, I think. Um, like I said, loads of reviews coming up. Um, some interesting pieces, you know. And, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. So, uh, thank you very much for watching this waffle. And I will see you on the next one. Stay safe.